Boston, Providence, and the surrounding New England areas. We have a major alert for you, and we ain't talking about the snow. No, nope. We're talking about a low-ticket warning. Come out and see the live show, baby. Yeah, guys, it's a great way to introduce your friends to the show. Grab the crew, grab the homies, grab the bozos, come out. Uh, there's still some tickets left for December 6th in Providence at the second show. Out of the, the late show in Boston has a few tickets left. Get them now. Let's party. Do it. Gang, this episode is brought to you by our good friends over there at Established Titles. If you purchase as little as one square foot of land, you yourself can call yourself a lord or a lady. That's all it takes, baby. <laughs> it's not only fun, nope. but you help preserve the Scottish woodlands. What are you doing, huh? Yeah. You don't, you don't like the environment, you dirtbag? Yeah, what are you, some kind of non-hippie or something, whatever it is? Guys, title packs give you one, at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelstein, Scotland. And if you get an official certificate and a crest, boom, hit it right there. Hey, yo, hey, yo. It makes you an amazing last minute, last minute gift. And, baby, we're in the gift-giving season right yes, we now. Are. So get on it. Well, you know you've been slacking. You know you've been on the, uh, the old TikTok. You've been following Elon Musk, whatever it is. Established Titles is running a Black Friday sale right now. Plus, if you use the code GARBAGE, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash garbage. You get your gifts now and help support the channel, baby. Support the people that support the channel by going to EstablishedTitles.com slash garbage to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Do it. Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. Hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's favorite new podcast. This is Are You Garbage? Hey, yeah. It's that little show we sit down with your favorite comedians, and we find out the group to be classy, yeah. or if they're just a big old piece of trash. Trash, trash, trash. I'm your host, H. Foley, coming at you on a beautiful day. We're down here at Aunt Tootie's basement. I have some bad news. Uh-oh. Tootie's missing. Oh, God. She's missing. So what are we going to do? Nothing for a little while. All right, let the, let the heat blow over, you know what I mean? Keep cashing those checks, daddy -o. My co-host is coming at you from across the table. He is the CEO of RU Garbage. He is the Prince of Park Avenue, but no matter what time of the year it is, the king of the boardwalk, baby. Give it up for Mr. Neptune 2006, KJ. Kevin James Ryan. What up, gang? Thanks for tuning in. As always, please make sure you rate, view, subscribe on iTunes. Full video available on YouTube. As you know, those numbers are... True to roof. Cooking. Baby, they're cooking well Ooh. over $100,000. Stuff your sorries in a sack, mister. We're 100,000 subscribers. What did I say? $100,000. No, 100,000 subscribers. <sighs> this guy's holding out. <laughs> <laughs> I got cash buried in the backyard. <laughs> fuck, Tootie. Over $18 million, ladies and gentlemen. What the fuck? 100,000. Subscribers over there on YouTube. That explains Tootie missing. <laughs> She's got a treasure map. She's looking. She walked. She's in, looking for cash. She walked in. You counting money? She had to go. <laughs> I clipped her out real quick. <clears throat> uh, and then obviously, uh, I would be remiss an asshole, a jerk off, a dickhead, a piece of shit, a bozo if I didn't mention the greatest website Ooh. of all time. Ooh. The, guys, take out a pen and a pad, a piece of paper, your browser, your Ooh. Internet Explorer, your, your Chrome, whatever Wee. you're using www.patreon.com slash are you garbage check it the fuck out gang good time over there a lot of content good we got time more content than anybody else out there i'll put it up to that we I'll, I'll put anybody to the test we got more content the pepsi challenge we called it my day uh-huh i want my harrier jet too there you go why harrier jet that was a big thing there's a there's a documentary now. Pepsi was giving away a Harrier jump jet? No, well, they th there was a, a, a commercial where you could get, like, glasses, a T-shirt, a leather jacket, and then at the end, it was, like, Harrier jet, seven million points. And this guy did the little snoop and snagging, and yeah. didn't say for, like, it didn't say, like, joking, obviously. And uh, he wanted it. He sued. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, he came, they said, yeah, it's a whole thing. Check it out on Netflix did, after you're done. Did they give it to him? I don't want to ruin it for the people Kids out there. just be handing out jets. So I want a Huey helicopter, Iroquois. Yeah, they with the door gunner. They, <laughs> who's gonna pay that guy? Some old school guy. Uh, those are like thirty five mil. Woo! Shit! Now we know where Tootie is. That's a lot of wild cherry Pepsi. I'll tell you that. <laughs> How about a nice quick shout out to our producer extraordinaire, the Magic Man, makes us all look good. <laughs> He's got a big old dick on him, gang. Okay. Give it up for T Bone McMuffin, Toby McMullen, family program. What's <laughs> up, guys? What's up, mom? Yo, when they were doing those challenges, they would have the codes underneath the the cap. 
apps. apps. Did you ever, before purchasing the drink, tilt it sideways oh, to course. try and see if it was a winner? See if you could catch a hanger. Damn, that's yeah. pretty smart. They don't really do that shit anymore, do they? Well, they started putting in the, the play. Before, you didn't have to peel, and you could kind of see the code, and then you had to start peeling off that, that layer. Oh, to love reveal. that blue peel. Uh-uh, it makes my blood run get cold. Get in there, get it. Um, we don't do cool shit like that anymore as a society, do we? What? We don't do like cool giveaways like that. You are the oldest man in the world. We don't. We, we don't, don't do. We, we don't do cool stuff. Anymore. We don't do cool. The lottery's shit. a billion dollars. What are you talking about? Yeah, That's whatever. Cool. Who the fuck wants a leather jacket from Pepsi? I just want one of those octopuses that rolls down the wall. They don't do good things in cereal anymore. The only thing. That is halfway decent are the Kinder Eggs, and that's not even American company. That's European. It's German. They're all right. You get like a little race car, a little dinosaur, a little something. You open up a Cracker Jack or a Fiddle Faddle or something like that. It's all crap. It's nothing good. We should do cool stuff like that anymore. That's what this country needs to bring everybody together is a big giveaway. Uh huh. <laughs> the lottery, dude. It's billion not, that's dollars. Not to, no, little kids What's, can't do that. Yeah, they can. No, they can't. You weren't playing scratchers as a kid? Tell hey, me right now. Hey, hey we'll, we'll talk off the air. <laughs> exactly. What are you talking about? You split it. You got to split it with your creepy uncle if you, if you get it. He's splitting that with me. Uh huh. I see what you're saying. You see what I'm saying. A little bit, but maybe they are. We just don't know. We don't have kids. You're like you're going like I'm kids are tuned in. I know what's you're going not on. Tuned in. I got nieces and nephews and little cousins. I know what's yes, going on. No, you don't. Yeah, are you telling me? I, who who who, who, are those, who are those kids that were kicking me in the shit I'm this weekend? I know. I'm saying you have them. You're not that tuned in. I know what's going on out uh -huh. there. Okay. I know what's going on. Sure. All right. We're not doing cool giveaways. I, I watch the commercials. There's no Pepsi this. There's no Mountain Dew yeah, that. Yeah, because they got jammed up and had to give away a fucking Harrier jet. <laughs> the liability on this alone. What are you talking about? It's this goddamn litigious society we're living in. Some guy in Michigan with an Ab yeah, Ab Abrams you, tank. You throw a fucking decoder ring in a Cracker Jack box. Next thing you know, kids are choking on it and shit. I know. It sucks. Yeah. That, the high dives, everything. Somebody always, The high dives? Somebody always ruins it. They had to get rid of all the high dives. Some kid cracked his head open uh -huh. and jumping off the side playing tomfoolery and doing grab ass yeah. you get up there you're scared to death you jump off and then you swim over to the side would like you, a gentleman would you ever jump off one of those ledges like those big diving ledges <laughs> i know <laughs> nothing would happen to you hey <laughs> still scared the shit maybe that's a patreon goal dude, dude me and the big no are you talking cliff jumping no, no, no I can't cliff it. jump. I almost lost my leg from the knee down. That was only like eight feet. <laughs> <laughs> Kippy is not. <laughs> I learned early. I'm not an outdoorsman. That was right? in the bathtub. <laughs> um, no. Olymp and, and, and Me and you hold Olympic hands. diving pools. Yeah, they like have diving boards. Then they have those ledges. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one that Bam Margera all ate off of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that ain't happening. Is that how you know everything? That's how, that's your reference to everything? <laughs> that's, my, that's how I contextualize life. When Johnny Knoxville jumped off the roof of the Pentagon. Oh, I know that. <laughs> Toby, you ever been to Cracker Barrel? Yeah, Ryan Dunn got thrown out of one in 2002. Hey, rest, rest in peace, all right? Don't be of bring, course, rest in peace. Bringing up, don't be sullying the name of the dead. Shout out to him. Hope this episode's ruined. <laughs> <laughs> that voodoo doll's going to come get you. Shout out to Mr. Dunn. Um, I wanted to ask you. What do you got, big feller? <laughs> I noticed something. Uh, I was at a, a relative's house this weekend. I noticed something, something pretty trashy. Uh, either you guys have any family members or in your house or your house growing up, was the light to the bathroom on the outside of the door. Yikes. Yeah. That's when you really know. Whoa. That's when you know. On the outside? On the outside. That. Oh. That's a, you go that's into like the a bed, school. You go into the bed. I can't find a light. It's on the outside of the door. Oh, real yeah. bad. No, you can't. You got to. No. What? That'd be like residential. Giving, that'd be like giving your brother the nuclear codes. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it makes her real good. Scary shitting all over the floor and stuff. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> Turn it back on, dude. Uh, yeah. Turn the light. Yeah. In the same vein, um, we used to. Uh, or the pool. What about this? That thing. I got one of those in my closet in my apartment now. <laughs> you do? It's kind of fun. It's a good time. Yeah. Every yeah, time yeah. I pull one of them, I'm just waiting for a witch to be looking at it. <laughs> waiting for a fucking iron to come down and hit me in the head. <laughs> Marv! <laughs> a bunch of bowling balls. <laughs> no, that's more scary to me. That You hear that? That was always down in the basement, that's too. That's the first thing that always... That's the first time to know you're in a haunted house when that thing doesn't go right away. If that thing gives you trouble on the first pull, get out. Dude. It's, it's only going to get worse, dude. I'm bolting up the steps. If I, had to get I still run up. I got to say, grown man, 
pretty sure there's no boogeyman. Sure. I run up the steps of the basement at my mother's house. Of course. Man, I of throw course. it in fucking third. I am Ooh. out. My brother's cellar is frightening. A cellar's scarier than a basement. Forget it. Crawl space is where the fucking heebie-jeebies live. I got a crawl space now. Yeah, my mom, we have one at my mom's. Ooh, I probably man. used to go in there and hide. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Fucking go face to face with El Diablo. <laughs> that guy liked to look death in the eyes and keep pushing. Holy shit, man. Yeah. I wouldn't go in there without any nickel on me. Ever. <laughs> Never. I didn't dude. say he wasn't strapped to the gills. Never. If I had to go in there, I would just scream and cry until they. Fine, I'll go in and get it. We yeah. Make Patty go in and get it. So we have our. You've been in my bed. Better basement. her than me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? She's lived a life. <laughs> I'm a young man. I'm a young boy. I got my whole life in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> we had the the basement, right? You've been in my basement. It's a sure. It's the the tours on Patreon. We had the basement, and then there's like a second, smaller back room. No, but then off that is the utility room. Holy shit! And then in the utility, they're it's small. In the utility room, <clears throat> there's the crawl space. And each room gets colder and colder as yeah. you go. It's the you can, demons. You can feel the spirits all Yeah, lingering. that's no good. Uh-huh. It goes... The dog won't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> Just stands there barking. <laughs> it goes finished basement. Then it goes the room behind the finished basement that for some reason... They, they didn't, never always they finish. Didn't finish. Storage. It. We're doing storage. Yeah. Then you got the crawl space down there. That's where you store the Jersey Devil. This, this, <laughs> this, this, this keeps his luggage in there. <laughs> Hey, guys, I'm going abroad. I got to stop by and pick up my roller bag. Keeps his beers in there. Um, and then you go unfinished basement would be scarier with, the, you know, you, the fucking um, the water heater and stuff like that. And uh-huh. There's all kinds of things around where you swear you can see somebody just like peeking out from behind something. Yeah. First of all, one thing we never did that I never allowed in my house, there was never any covering of the furniture. Like Maybe. if we if, if like we had a basement in our house in Wilkesbury and we had some old furniture down there and I remember for for a minute when we moved in my mom put sheets around them mm-hmm. I'm like yo who are you Bruce Wayne yeah. you're not covering get rid of that that's not happening now nah, we never did we just ruined shit we you know and then the scariest is a cellar it's just a straight dirt floor cellar mm-hmm. which we had with there my grandparents had one in Wilkesbury and it smelled like death yeah. It's all like mold. It's all like the 1800s. There was the farmhouse in my neighborhood, like we said, you know, the my neighborhood was developed on an old farm, and they kept they, a lot of places kept the farmhouse. Yeah, that's scary enough. And the, this kid Ryan lived there. He was possessed for sure, dude. That kid was cuckoo bananas. That whole family was rough. And <laughs> Ryan, you want a skateboard? Now I'm gonna go home and spin my head around a couple of times. <laughs> I'm gonna go speak in tongues. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> you sleep on a ceiling, huh? It's scary, man. And we would have to go play in like the like the shed and the cell and fuck dude. the shed. The shed is where they kept all the toys. It was so cold in there, what? even in the dead of summer, dude. It was so cold. I remember like reaching down for like a basketball or something. <laughs> Fucking something bit me. <laughs> Dude, who keeps their toys in the shed? Oh, like ba- well, wiffle ball stuff. I can yeah, see not, that. Yeah, not like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like sport, like outdoor stuff. A bike, a, the balls, a wiffle ball. Nah, I'm good. I'll yeah. see you in school. Uh, I'm out of there. I didn't like that shit at all. Dude. But the light on the outside is that's a good a bad, indicator of trash. That's a bad It's look. usually the bathroom. It's usually the bathroom. Yeah, but why is that? That doesn't make sense. I don't know. So you don't have to go in to turn it off? Is that I don't the know. only is is the only uh But I was in there fumbling around in the dark for about two minutes trying to take a tinky and I finally I'm, I yell Is like, it a newer house or an older house? Beyond old. Yeah, that okay. Yeah, that makes like sense. Big Bang old. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> There's some carbon on the walls. All right, that kind of makes sense. The light switch is a giant lever. Like, yeah. <laughs> like Einstein's. <laughs> ah, so you got to be Edison to take a leap. All right, that makes a little bit more I just sense. don't want to piss on the floor. I don't want to wake up Frankenstein Anybody got a here. kite? Yeah. Give me a break here. But now after a couple, after like a minute in there, I was like, oh, wait a minute. And I peeked out. And then I just flicked it on and it came on. I was like, ooh. Yeah, that's. I didn't like it. Uh uh-uh. uh. No dice. Those weird window panes. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, I'll older houses kind of irk me. Sure. Sure. That's they're, why they're like, beautiful. I, I always said I would do, if I was goodbye, I would want to do new construction or something that, like, I don't want something so old. Something 20 years. So I, you know, something before I was alive creeps me out. 
If sure. they go, this is built in 92, I go, I got it. I remember the 90s. Nothing, nothing. you know, there was no crazy headlines or whatever. Yeah. Kirk Cameron's going to pop out. Yeah, exactly. no, Who's going to get me there? That. Yeah. You know I mean? no One of the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, but yeah, something built in the 18. That's fucking. I live in a pre-war building right now. That's different, though. There's mm. no ghost in New York. I don't know. Yeah, there are. Where are they? What are they're, you talking about? They're hanging. No. Somebody definitely died in my apartment. Doesn't mean there's ghosts there. Maybe. You're about to die in your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely haunting. You kidding me? Uh, Something to do. <laughs> What's for dinner? <laughs> uh, all right, but let's get into it, gang. We got a old family uh, episode. Family episode. So as you know, when you join the old Patreon, we will answer your garbage question. That's one of the perks of joining the old page. Ooh, one of. One of many perks. You can get that hard feelings. You get that AYG bonus. You got a lot of vlog bonus behind the scenes content coming up, too. Plus, we're thinking about buying a timeshare. I can get in on it. <laughs> In three hours every year. <laughs> and we should do one. We should all pull our money. Everybody should pull their money and buy like a mountain house. And everybody gets like, oh, nah, that's not enough time. A night, I guess. One everybody night. gets three hours. You said. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's get into it. This one's from Michael. Has anyone in your family ever been asked to put their cig out by a police officer? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, can you put that cigarette down, please? <laughs> Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to put down that Marlboro Light. Uh, I have, yeah. When I was, uh, uh, it was, I was 18. I remember I was, uh, we got caught underage drinking down the shore. In uh -huh. the house. Cops came in. Sure. And he was like, where's your ID? And I was smoking inside. Back in the day, pre-2005, you could smoke anywhere than just crack a window, and it who, was fine. Who are you, Clint Eastwood? You're, the cops come in, you're, you put the cigarette out when they eat, rolls in. <laughs> it was pretty, you're still smoking? I was, trying to, I was trying to act like I was over 21. <laughs> <laughs> Officer, I have the confidence to smoke in front of you. You're holding the baby. <laughs> uh, but I was looking for my wallet in my room, and I had the cig in my mouth. I was, I was drunk, all right? Couldn't find my wallet because he asked for ID. So I'm digging through my like bag, and I remember the smoke kept burning my eye because I I needed both. I had to sig in my mouth. So you know you do that wind for your yeah. Body. I hate that. Uh, and I was bending down, so it was coming right up in my eye. And he's like, "Why don't you put that cigarette out?" Pal? I was like, "Ah, it's a good day. Get right, I'll get right back to business." Also. You light up another one, <laughs> put two in. Yeah, I take that copper. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. This guy. Yeah, I was, I was a young guy. No, I was a young drunk you kid. You always put the cig out when the heat rolls in. Let's go. Uh, yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I, I panicked. I wasn't thinking straight. I remember Patty got pulled over one time, and she was... You're allowed to smoke when you're pulled over. I mean, what, 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 what's the deal here? Yeah, he didn't appreciate it. Yeah, I don't think it's a, It's not like an honorable... No. Uh, so you might put that cigarette out. If the cherries and berries ever lit up behind you in high school, it was always light cigs to cover up the weeds. That smell. was always a big thing, too. If you're underage sure. drinking or smoking weed or got weed in the car, hit the Bernie's heavy. <laughs> I used to keep a pack of ports right in the glove box just to get that deep, rich menthol smell going. Keep a box of Macanudos in the glove compartment. <laughs> Officer, <laughs> I'm having a boy, huh? <laughs> what do you say? You join me in a nice, a nice cigar, huh? Hey, it's a Cuban. Don't tell anybody. Huh? <laughs> hey, be cool. Don't it? write me up, will you? Uh, that's a home run. Home run. Yeah. Love damn. that. Sigs by the... I don't have a whole lot of experience getting pulled over. Yeah, two, three times, maybe. You want to know one of my greatest achievements was? Um, was I was driving... I was at home. I was driving. I had a heat. I was smoking a heater. Stinger? Stinger. Bernie? Um... Cop behind me, mm -hmm. I flick it out the window. Sure. Roo, roo, roo. Light you up. Lights me up. We're going to light them up. I'm a proud supporter of the police department uh -huh. here. Pull me over. <laughs> so I pull out my PBA card. Professional Bowler Association. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I just came back from scoring a turkey. <laughs> um, no, nah, he pulls me over. And I I saw that he was behind me, so I just, I field stripped it. You know what that means? Yeah, you, you put the cherry out. Yeah. And then you take the... Keep the filter, because that's the part that contaminates the planet. Yeah. And I put that in my little, in my little thing. Uh -huh. Pull over, pulls me over, he comes out. I saw you flick that cigarette out, and I go, I go, what do you mean? I have it right here. He goes, oh. oh. Walk back to his car. 
followed me for about half oh, an yeah, hour. He's trying that. to catch you. Yeah. He was, but they were posted up out front of the house for a <laughs> make hot a, minute. Make a move, fat ass. <laughs> Which I appreciate the chase. You know what I mean? <laughs> a little bit of cat and mouse. Yeah, keep like everybody, it. keep everybody honest. You I, know like what I, mean? yeah. I like it. I like it. I want to show up with the boys. I uh, I got pulled over one time at the Lincoln Tunnel. I was coming up to do a bringer show, which for the listener, bringer shows were like uh, the height of the entertainment industry. Oh man, it's you're doing bringer shows are tough. As a new comedian, the club goes or like a producer goes, "Hey, you can be on my show, but you got to bring six people." Some doubt uh, six is a little. It's like sure. ten to fifteen. Can you bring twelve people? And that's the way that they, they pack the pack the club out. It's a bit of a money-making scheme for everybody involved but the comedian. Sure. Um, but it is what it is. I was happy to do the time. Um, but me and my pal, uh, John Nunn, were coming up, and he flicked a cig out at the... We were going through the tunnel, and he fucking lit us up where there's no so- shoulder. A guy behind New Jersey State Trooper lit us up. Chasing you through the tunnel? No, he chased me. I stopped, but now I'm just blocking a lane of the tunnel at, like, fucking 6 o'clock. Or yeah, like, right. I swear to God. Does he get out? Yeah, he got out, came up. because you know why I pulled you over? What are you doing from here? Let me see your license, blah, blah, blah. And we were like, oh, we're going to a comedy show. He's like, it's fucking rush hour, buddy. What are you doing? Oh, yeah, he didn't case like, Pennsylvania, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, we're up here for a comedy show. He goes, ah, who are you seeing? And right there, I kind of knew I had him. I go, oh, we're actually comedians. He goes, ah, oh, no shit. How long you been on the circuit? And I'm like, all right, here we go. <laughs> About 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in an hour? I could use two more guys. <laughs> you have any dinner plans? <laughs> How about you and the missus come over? And, uh, Did he write you up? No, he just goes, let me make sure none of you guys have warrants on you. And I'm sitting next to John Dunn. If you don't know him, he looks like a fucking bouncer for the Hells Angels. <laughs> He's Shout out to hats, Johnny neck Dunn. Pats, hand tats, the whole nine. I go, are you going to come out of this? He goes, I don't know, man. Let's see if that stuff got cleared up. I'm like, all right. <laughs> all right, man. He came back. He's like, enjoy the show or whatever. Kip, let's talk about Seven Strong. Oh, baby, this one is near and dear to the big Ooh. man's heart, baby. I'm not even selling it. I'm just telling you the truth. You've all been hitting me up. Foley, where do you get those cool shirts? Uh-huh. I've responded. I sent you the link. This is it. Seven strong. Yeah, I've had comics. Other bigger gentlemen hit me up and say, where's Big Man getting all this fly gear? They go up to 4X. They are flexible. They are comfortable. They look good. Uh, they don't wrinkle, really. It's yeah. unbelievable. But trust man. me. And you can wrinkle a shirt. You throw it in your bag. You fluff it out. It's ready to go. I, let me tell you something. I love these shirts. Mm-hmm. I love these shirts. They're comfortable. They're cool. They make me look sharp. They make me feel good. These shirts feel like me. That's all I'm going to say. You're going to be buried in one, I'm sure. Not, Probably. Not that far away. Uh, these shirts are for the folks who want to have fun every day, baby. Good stuff. School photos, court date, wedding, whatever you got, trying to get your kids back. This is what they do. Shout out to Seven Strong, the boys. They all come out yeah. to the shows in California. We fucking love you guys. Right now, love Seven it. Strong is getting ready to bring the, for their Black Friday sale, running the Black Friday through Cyber Monday. Uh, with up to 34% off most items, this is the best time to give the wardrobe a refresh. And as a special deal just for garbage listeners, visit 7-strong.com. That's the number, 7-strong.com. And use our code AYG5 to get an additional $5 off. One code per customer. Some restrictions apply. Sales prices will be applied in the cart. 7-strong, everyday wear for everybody. Do it. They're the best. Let's talk about Freeze Bite, baby. Ooh, they call me Mr. Freeze over Ooh, there. Let's talk about pulling tubes. <laughs> Ripping bangers. That was my biggest complaint back in the day, man. Your throat would get hot. It would burn your throat, all that stuff. Freeze pipe, you throw it in the freezer, cools everything down, gives you a nice thick cloud. Mm-hmm. It's a really a good time, man, and it's a sharp-looking piece of equipment. It does I'll look tell pretty you that. cool. Comes in a cool box. You, I feel official with that thing. Yeah. No more throat burn, no more tense coughing tax, no more chugging water after every rip, baby. The secret is the freezable glycerin chambers that come on every piece, pop one of these chambers in the freezer for about an hour, and you're ready to start cooking. Yeah. Smoke is instantly cooled as it passes through the icy chamber. Mm-hmm. Change how you smoke forever, baby. Pipes, bubblers, bongs, dab, ri- dab rigs, and more. If you can smoke it, Freeze Pipe makes it. <laughs> so head over to thefreezepipe.com and enjoy yeah. your new favorite piece. What are we at doing? Every day, great prices. Use code GARBAGE for 10% off your next order. That's the T H E freezepipe dot com code garbage save ten percent. Shop today, your throat and lungs will thank you. Do it. See you on Pluto. Woo. Oh, Shout God out to out. none. Uh, I love it. But home run of a question. This one in the same world. This is from Jake Ten Dollar Dirtbag. Shout Ooh. out. 
Is it garbage for me to wear a golf glove while I'm ripping darts in the car so my wife doesn't smell it on my hands when I get home? I respect that. Yeah. But it's other places, too. But the hands are the worst. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's tough. Even, you know, a hand wash don't get that off. You got to wash, sanitize, and then, like, eat Doritos or something. When somebody rolls in from having a, having a smoke outside in, in the, the cold. cold. Well, I remember your uncle would you. do that when he rolled in. You do it. Like, you come in damn. here smelling like a fucking ashtray sometimes. I don't smoke things. <laughs> what? Our, this whole show is based on the premise of me and you fucking ripping Bernie's. We sell shirts that say Bernie. Ah, man. I lied to my primary care physician today about that. <laughs> So you're still not smoking? Yeah, doing good. Feel great. Eating two packs a day, though. Uh, yeah, they know. He knows. They know. He, he knows. I was smoking in the office. <laughs> so you're going to have to put that out. Are you still smoking? <laughs> <laughs> you ever have a doctor tell you to put a cig out? <laughs> um, I remember that was the big dirtbag thing, like in college and stuff. If the doctor found out you smoked, your insurance would get all fucked up. So he always said no, and I caved the one time, and I was like, yeah, you know, I have one now and then. He's like, so you are a smoker. And I was like, no, 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 I swear to God. And he fucking marked me. I marked it down in my file. <laughs> yeah. I was worried he was going to call my mom and tell her I was back on the heaters. It's <laughs> fat little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I-, I had a quick one for you, fellas. Hit What's that, Toby? You, allied- you alluded to it on the Natasha Leggero episode. Shout fully. out Shout to Natasha. But I had the thought beforehand, which is kismet, you brought it up. If you have a wad of cash, no wallet, <laughs> are you going large bills on the outside or small bills on the outside? I mean, the wise guy um, etiquette would be, as Lefty from Mulberry Street said, beaner on the outside. Keep a beaner on the outside. Keep the hundred on the outside. This is my thing. But I'm also... But these animals in this city, they'll jump out the window at you to get it. If, they, if, you're, if you're flexing a five. Yeah. But you still want to keep up appearances. True. Right? So it's a, it's a fine line you got to dance. On the street, you invert it. No. But, this is what I do. Go ahead. Uh, if I'm leaving the house, right? Mm-hmm. Leaving the house, I got my money from the day before, whatever. I drop the ones off. I don't take the one. I don't leave the house with ones. It's like my little, I have like a little savings, like a little jar we put all the ones in. If you need like milk money, whatever. I run out of, there's, you know, there's 20, 30 bucks there or whatever. Milk money? Who are you living with? <laughs> he's, he's European. Is he moving with the little rascals? <laughs> <laughs> no, if you remember from, do you remember Red Man's Crib, MTV Cribs? Yeah, he had the shoebox over his fridge. His dollar box. I've always wanted a dollar box, and I've never had enough dollars to maintain a dollar box, but now I have a dollar box. Okay. So if you ever just need well, whatever, you know, tips or whatever. I like having ones on me. A little I bit don't. of this, a little too, bit of that. Nah. They're two whatever. So I only leave the house with twenties. Really? Yeah. Two, two, three twenties, that's it. That's what I'm that's what I'm rocking with. Two tree twenties. Hmm. Okay. And spot pay, you bury if you get a hundo from, you know Hundo. Spot pay. Nice. You bury that in the middle of the twenties. Really? So it get it lets people think like, oh, he's at least got twenty bucks. What's on the inside? Who knows? Who knows? I always go. I was always told to go small bills on the outside so you don't get jumped or whatever. Yeah, but like I said, you want to fucking, you know, you want to look cool. You want to look cool. Can't be flashing ones like a bozo. The trashy answer, I think, is ones on the outside. And then all classes, you got you got your heavy bike rolling outside because then you're, you're going places where it doesn't matter. Yeah, but it's like if you have 100 and then two 20s, it's like so aware that you're trying to show off that 100. You need like four grand to be like, yeah, I keep the, they're all hundreds. It doesn't matter. But if you have, <laughs> if you have one oh, like a $100 bill surrounding like three ratty ones, oh, yeah. that's a bad look. Straight, no. to, straight to fives. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen the, the, that's a tough look. the picture of, of Puff Daddy courtside holding a wad of hundreds and 120 and he's looking at the 20 like, oh, fuck this game. Yeah, He's looking like, what is this? Who gave me this? It's not even worth my time to count it. I heard a clip from, uh, I think it was Brad Williams uh, this weekend. He he did the, I guess he was traveling somewhere. I believe it was Brad Williams. He did, he was traveling somewhere. Uh-huh. And he had, I guess they were told, get a shitty cell phone and a fake wallet. 
case you get robbed, sure. that's what you hand over. Uh-huh. That's a that's a move I wouldn't mind having. That was back in the day. That was in the eighties. Colin Quinn says it uh, in his show, uh, the New York, uh, the New York show is you'd have your mugger money. They'd say, "Hey, have your mugger money on you." That's have, that's just have twenty bucks rolled up, and they go, "Hey, give me your money." And you go, ah, here's here's my mugger money. That's not bad. He goes, you got to a point where they're like, just give me your twenty that you already like. I won't take everything. Just give me the twenty. That's <laughs> a gentleman's thing. That's it's hey, getting robbed one thing. I don't want to have to fucking go to the DMV and deal with all that shit. Yeah, let me or fucking my call me. Yeah, let me get my wallet. Uh-huh. It's my Toomey. I've had that thing forever. It might not be this episode. <laughs> uh, we, might be, we might be loyal to another brand. Ooh, nice. <laughs> um, all right, this one's from Bannister Lannister. Don't think that's his first name. Uh, ever got an airborne in a car? <laughs> Dude, you're fucking up. If all four wheels come off the ground. Once, and I was so fucking mad at my friend for uh, letting us drive to school with this kid. Who the kid? Buddy, Wait, is it a doom buggy on the way to school? <laughs> what the, how do you get airborne on the way to school? It's 7 o'clock in the morning. Fucking hitting the gas. <laughs> so... Uh, me and my boy, me, me and my boy live in the same neighborhood. This kid lived in the same neighborhood and him and I, I think at the time we're taking turns driving. You drive, I'll drive, I'll drive you yeah, drive, yeah. you drive. So he's like, I, he's, he's like, he's like, Josh is going to drive. Never like the new guy in the mix. A friend of a friend. I hate. He did two moves and I was an old man then. <laughs> I didn't like that shit. I didn't like jumping off the roof into the pool or fucking going to the quarry. You kids get off my roof. Nah, I don't like any of that. I didn't like doing dangerous shit where I was going to end up as the fucking, you see what happens? Yeah. I mean, Patty and Terry instilled that in me. Like when they would put like the car out in front of the high school near prom, that shit petrified me. Like going to prom, I didn't, I didn't, I, I drove, I didn't drink anything. I wore three condoms. <laughs> <laughs> Only did <I> anal. <laughs> didn't even get laid. I don't want to knock this broad up. <laughs> Put them on after the shower. <laughs> I didn't You're like wearing them there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like that shit. Okay. And he picks us up and he's got a, I think he had a Zephyr. You know what a Zephyr is? It was an old piece of shit car. Uh. And over on this one street, Cathcart Road, there was like this little hump. I know that there's a hump in every town. And man, out of nowhere, he's like, watch just he's like, watch this. And fucking and dude, I I had a fucking wrestling meet that night. I was like, dude, what are you doing, man? (laughs) Fucking I freaked out. And then as we got closer to the school, there was this other uh there was a house that had a horseshoe driveway. Mm -hmm. That went from one road to the other. He pulls in there real fast and goes through their horseshoe. That was kind of fun. <laughs> but the jumping, mm-mm, didn't like that shit. That shit the kids do now is crazy. Is They're all standing in a circle, spinning the cars, and they all want to get hit by the car. Mm-hmm. You break a hip. I don't trust that. Like the what is that? What do they? What do they do? How, Toby might know. How, I don't know how they do that. I'm not a car guy. How do they do that thing where like? How do they do donuts? They hold in the brake, or what's going on? Well, that the front of the car is staying where still. Where they're spinning? There's got to be something cooking there. I don't know, but it's irresponsible. Well, as you go home and get your homework as, done. Yeah, Toby doesn't have a license. As an unlicensed street racer myself. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, our friends used to go down to the races. North Carolina drift. Our friends used to go down to the... couple of kids growing up had, like, real shitty... <laughs> Mustangs. And Parents? Would, yeah, yo, for sure. <laughs> Single family home. Like, dad was, you know, somewhere and would send checks. And, the, you know, it was a loveless household. Date bounce. A lot of pit bulls floating around, too. Sure. Um, kick it smoke cigs out front of the house at, like, 14, 15 years it's cool old. cool She don't care. Yeah. Like one of those kids where you're like, do you have parents? Like I've never seen them. They've never showed up to pick you up at the basketball games or anything. Yeah, um, so kids a, always hanging out under a streetlight. Couple of houses where there's holes punched in the wall in the living room. Oh yeah, yeah you save that shit for the bedroom. But kids would go down to the races. Uh, Which ones? Down in South Philly, like by the airport. Like on like Del- oh like it, like illegal races yeah like like the drag. We're not races. talking about the trotters here. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> not, not talking about Belmont, dude. <laughs> talking about fucking like no mint juleps and weird hats. No, like South Philly street races on like Wednesday nights. No, and I'm like because Fast and Furious was banging back sure. then. Everybody wanted a souped up Civic. Sure, uh, myself included. I hate that. <laughs> I hate that. And it's always the cars like half shitty, half. Not. I never mm-hmm. got it, but I remember. 
Friends of mine, of ours, would be like, yeah, we're going down to the races tonight. I'd, like, fake a tummy ache. <laughs> I'm like, buddy, I can't make it. You ain't about that life. Uh, no, dude, no fucking way. Somebody's stopping at a cheesesteak or something, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, family matters. I wish Fuck we could help out. that. Yeah, yeah. Nah, uh, it's never happened. But we did have the hump where you would, like, my dad would, like, speed over it, like, as, like, kids, like, just mm -hmm. to, like, scare us or whatever. Real, real cool guy. <laughs> Scaring the shit I've been out. in the back of the pickup, and the people have done a little bit version of that, too. Oh, yeah. We were back. We were a big back of the pickup, pickup yeah. kids. Older kids. It's like my brother's friends were driving us somewhere. They had a pickup. They'd ca catch us on something. Mm -hmm. But a little bit to shake us up. This was, I'm fucking, I got half a Pop-Tart in me. It's fucking 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm on my way to school. My hair's still wet from the shower, and this guy's playing fucking Evil Knievel. <laughs> Talking Just heavy to try bike. to fit in. You're killing me here. Uh-huh. Uh, that shit. Home run of a question, though. Home run. All right, this one's from uh, Bibatron, I guess. $10 shareholder. Uh, did you or anyone in your family ever own a hookah? Which is the trashiest of the tobacco smoking. Not if you're pulling tubes out of it, dude. Yeah, but then still, I mean, who's smoking? You just smoke a bong or a fucking. Right here. I don't know. Somebody's dad had one. And this is before I knew that you were supposed to smoke uh, tobacco. What, what, what do you, no, what, they don't smoke tobacco out of a hookah. Yeah, they do. It's like incense or myrrh or no, something like that. it's flavored tobacco. I don't think so. It's like ash or something. Uh, it's called shisha, I believe. Okay, uh, and it's a to it's a like a wet tobacco. Yeah, it's tobacco. <sighs> it's like flavored tobacco. Okay. They put coals on there so it like continues to burn. So Maybe you that's can be what roasting I'm... some beasters. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what I'm saying. I'm sure it's cool. Rip tubes. Um, but yeah, like we had we had one that had like four different tubes, and you put weed in it, we'd all smoke it. Yeah, smoking. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a little. I mean, I think it's trashier to have one for just tobacco use than anything. I mean, some cultures that that's cultures what are they different. do. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. I live in the Heights, which is a lot of uh, predominantly Dominican, and they it's like huge. The hookah, the hookah lounges. Everywhere. Really? Yeah. I mean, most of New York uh, has most of the cult. Like, you can't go like four blocks I outside that was of Manhattan. More, I thought that was more like, what Middle Eastern it's Middle, it's Cas Casablanca. Every, it's ev it's everywhere. It's like there's a lot of cultures really leaned into it. Yeah, I yeah. think of like some fat cat smoking it. Hello, Rick. Yeah. No. It's, uh, I mean, out on the streets, everything. Hmm. Just, like, posting up. I mean, all, like, the... Nah. If you go into most fucking uh, bodegas, they sell hookah shit. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least the tubes, the fucking whatever, yeah. I'm sure at your fancy sleepaway school, you probably smoked that shit. No, nah, we had it in my dirtbag flop house in Chicago, though. There you go. A hookah? Oh, yeah. Were you smoking hookah or were you smoking doobies out of it? Uh, mostly, it would just be shisha or whatever, and then occasionally someone would throw some nugs in there. Huh. Do a little... You know, do a little Steinway split. A little spliff type deal. I don't Some hate it. Nugs. Nugs is all right. That out to him. Kip, it's Kamikoto time, baby. Kamikoto. It's time to slice through that Thanksgiving turkey like a hot knife through butter, baby. <laughs> Kamikoto builds over 800 years of Japanese experience in creating steel to make knives that have been meticulously handcrafted using techniques that date back to Japan's. Edo period. It's one of my favorite periods. That Edo period. Of course. Nothing wrong with it. Gang, absolutely fantastic knives. Their single bevel edge can achieve an unbelievable sharp edge. You just can't get with other knives. Don't be a bozo. What are you doing? You can cut through a ribeye like butter. Uh-huh. I'm telling you. Buddy, they, they were nice enough to send me a package of them. It comes in a nice wooden thing. <laughs> Flip it open, nice soft in there. Got them. Me and my, me and my wife were sword fighting in a goddamn kitchen. Uh, choose by Michelin star chefs worldwide. Every knife is individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee. And each knife comes in a gorgeous, heavy-duty ashwood box, like I just said. There you go. So give, gifting a set or two is a no-brainer in this time of year. Everybody knows that. Kamikoto has several, has several special offers going on right now and is offering our viewers an extra $50 off any purchase with the code GARBAGE. Just go to kamikoto.com slash garbage. That's K-A-M-I-K-O-T-O dot com slash garbage. Use the promo code garbage for $50 off the best Japanese steel knives on the planet. Do it.
Kip, it's time for movement, baby. Oh, baby. It's time for movement and a shaking. Gang, mm-hmm. a lot of people do things one way. Why don't you be a trendsetter and do things the other way? Switch it up. That's what two college dropouts did in an apartment back in the day when they created the greatest watch company of all time. Uh-huh. Clean designs, top quality product. Yep. And here's the turkey. What's that? What do you think? Gobble, gobble. Fraction of the price. Uh, <laughs> who don't love a fraction of the price? Fraction of the price. Now you're speaking my language, Daddy. There you go. Guys, the good folks at Movement, we've been talking about it for years now. They, they, they were nice enough to send uh, send me a nice watch. Baby, um, I, I love it. I This is how much of a bozo I am. They sent me a watch. I went out. I was like, I got to get an expensive watch. I went out and bought an expensive watch. I like Movement's watch better. It looks cooler. It looks better. My wife likes it better. I tried to throw a move on her. She shut me down. Whatever. <laughs> Watches are just the beginning of Movement's line. They have eyewear, jewelry, uh, designed to set you and apart. And blue blockers, too. Oh, but it's the best. So be a good gift giver with Movement during their seasonal sale. Get a special discount just in time for the holidays. Join Movement today at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com. Do it. Kip, establish titles, baby. Let's run it back one more time. Hey, ladies. Hey, lords. Big fans of established titles over here on the show. Say you got to get a town let the heat blow over. Get some land over there in Scotland. Yeah. Hide out for a little bit. I know. This is the only way I'm a a goddamn landowner is by by established titles. There you go. Ain't nobody else giving me a square foot of land nowhere else. Hey, my grandfather said buy real estate. They ain't making any more of it. It. <laughs> there you go. That's the smartest thing I ever heard you say, baby. <laughs> Guys, with every order of titles, a title with every order established titles plants a tree and works with global charities. How about that? To to support global reef reforestation efforts. Title go. packs give you uh, at least one square foot of dedicated land on private estate in Edelston, Scotland. An official certificate with a crest. Boom. We got one right here. We got T Bones got one. I got one. Big man got one. Get the, that put on your license. The first two hundred people purchase the title pack using our link will effectively be next to our plots with a few minutes of walking. We can be neighbors. We can build our own garbage kingdom, baby. It makes a great last minute gift. And uh, stay off my lawn. Established Titles is running a Black Friday sale. Plus, if you use the code garbage, you get an additional 10% off. Go to establishedtitles.com slash garbage and get your gifts now and help support the channel. Do it. Who was talking the other day about blowing shotguns? Was that you? Yeah. Blowing shotguns. Yeah, you were making you were making fun of my mom telling me saying that she blowing shotguns. Oh. I, I've been meaning to ask you guys this for like a month. Hit me. What do you We call- just spent every day together for the past three months, dude. <laughs> no, I know. I just keep slipping my mind. What do you call it when you hold in smoke so long that when you exhale nothing comes out? Oh. Um go not ghost ghosting it maybe? Ghosting, that's a popular yeah. one. I think you call it a drug addiction, I believe. <laughs> You didn't have a name for that fully? Um, I don't think so. Zeroing? Nah. Also popular? Maybe. I don't know. We did used to have, I remember smoking a blunt in my short-lived uh, weed career. I would panic like a motherfucker. <laughs> smoking a blunt on the side of this kid's house uh, who was like, you know, still rough around the edges, this kid. This mm-hmm. was just one of those where you're like, what are your, or, do you have parents? Those type kids. Mm-hmm. Smoking a blunt, and they had the idea. I think they called it the Chicago. You Chicago it, where you take. We were also twelve, so like somebody could have just made this up completely. Where you take a hit, and then it goes around, and you're not allowed to exhale until it gets back to you. Well, that's a good time. Man, my world inverted. <laughs> I might as well have been an Inception, dude. Uh, my world turned upside down yeah. because you exhale and then hit it again. So you're like. That's the only thing you're getting is fucking blunt smoke as a 12-year-old. Where su- were you on that one, Mom? When a super hot chick would, would shotgun. That was pretty cool. With you? Yeah. Oh, I never had that. Oh, really? <laughs> Shout out to my oh, boy, Pat. I, I, had, I had him a couple of times. <laughs> Vinny went to skinny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um. All right. Here. This. This is just. This is Murph the God. Ever seen your own asshole? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. How? Mirrors. <laughs> NASA. Photographs. <laughs> I went down there to NASA. Uh, I did a full spread with Andy Leibowitz. What do you think, dickhead? <laughs> He's probably shaving my butt Fucking Mike Concho over here. <laughs> Pulled his butt apart. It's like Indiana Jones where he has the 19 mirrors to yeah, get the sunlight. Yeah. <laughs> Some poor Egyptian kid holding it up. Hasim! <laughs> <laughs> like in the fifth element, he's yelling at him. Hold the light! 
I think I might have seen a moment. Ghosts start coming out everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's haunted for sure. When's the last time you touched your own butthole? <laughs> like, finger touched your butthole. I, 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 this morning in the shower, right? Yeah, probably. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what kind of, That was like I You're know, accusing I know, me And also like Wanted it to be I naughty. grew up with a kid Who said he's never Touched his own butthole You gotta uh, touch your butthole Well you also grew up With a pathological liar Because that's crazy Yeah I've looked I've seen everything Looked at everything I don't think, Fiddled with everything The whole nine yards You gotta know your own body Sure I don't I think I've taken Disgusting a, as mine is I think I've taken a glance Back in like high school or college, it was like, all right, that's enough for me, dog. You know what I mean? Hey, don't. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I know it's there. We don't fucking talk and we keep it moving. You know, what like I mean? a stepdad at Christmas. Hey, don't good to see you. <laughs> hey, don't good. Yeah, I'm yeah, doing good. Yeah, all right, yeah. talk to you later. He's probably a little beat up nowadays, though. But <laughs> you ever have a hemorrhoid? That'll scare God into you, bro. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> For sure. You got roids? I, mean, I have the most of the time. <laughs> Damn. I wonder why you don't look at hey, it. Hey, come on in, will you? <laughs> That's the first right, time well, I looked. Yeah. It was a little messy down there. A little spare tire back yeah. there, too. I looked. He was looking right back at me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing for Christmas? <laughs> you got a light? You mind putting that cig out? Hey, Hemorrhoid, you mind putting that cig out for a minute? Uh, <clears throat> I had a lot of discoloration around the... The outer, yeah. the outer rim. Look like a burn victim, I assume. Bad, it's bad. Yeah, that's what I. I don't want to know. It's like that's... an like an oak tree. You can count how many years it's been around. Yeah. Bad news. Uh huh. I wish I get it all bleached back there. Get it all cleaned up. I mean, you can. Uh, let's I focus know. on bigger issues at hand. Than <laughs> bleaching your butthole at the moment. Penis enlargement. I'm with you. <laughs> get, get in there. All right. This one's from Eric. Uh, is it garbage if your whole family slept on waterbeds? My parents still have one 35 years strong. <laughs> we had one in the house. My stepdad had one, I guess, in his uh, single days. And then when he moved into my mom's, we brought it over. My brother used it for a long time, which I've said. Ooh. I don't know how... And I haven't been on one since, you know, I was eight or whatever. How do you, how do you have intercourse on one? Yeah, I feel like you know, the. I feel it's very, in, my memory of it would be very unstable. You slap the wave at your feet and then you and ride you it. You gotta ride it, ain't you? I was the body, bur- body, body surfing champ of Wildwood. It's normal. Is I it? only probably did it once or twice because I, I had like it when I was like get, 16 like, or 17. You know what I mean? It's like a cat walking on the top of a pool cover <laughs> trying to figure it out. Well, what are you getting into there? What? You get your hands up every You let the, no, you let the water you do let, the work. I don't know. You sit back and enjoy <laughs> You it. let her do the work. <laughs> you let him do the work. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I just think about that a lot. And also like. My cousins had two. Is it good for your back? Can you get can you get eyes on that? Like, is it good for? Did it work? They because- went back and forth and said that like the water wasn't good. If the heater broke in the middle of the night, you could it could kill you because you would like go into hypothermia. I don't know. I thought it was pretty chill. Yeah, pretty snug. Had them for a long. There's a one in my house for a long time. Yeah. Right. Water beds are good for the back and can help the mu- with muscle tension, pressure points, pressure sores, and back pain. Next paragraph. A waterbed can cause back pain. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's all bullshit. I'm out. Do they still make them, though? I'm sure. Think so, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, I mean, you know, probably not a whole bunch. We, uh, when uh, mine got popped, because I threw it's a temp- pretty much just a fucking air mattress that you pull water in at yeah. this point. Uh, I threw a temper tantrum one night, started kicking my bed, and I popped it, didn't realize it, and then like a couple hours later, my brother came in and jumped on it, and he like fucking <laughs> almost Flooded drowned. The house. Yeah. Had to call Allstate. <clears throat> so we had to fucking use the hose to drain it, but I slept in that bed for about a year with a with a uh, a full-size mattress in there. Whoa. Inside the water bed. That's... A tough look. Trash. That's what we call white trash. But it was actually kind of cool. It was cozy. Uh, I guess Because it so. just, fit. just fit. And I had like a, I had like a little space between that and the headboard. You just put your snacks. Put my snacks. Uh-huh. Put put like my GI Joes. Mm-hmm. Couple comic books. Couple of nudie mags. Don't mind it. Patty, I uh, Patty none the My wiser. sister popped my brothers in a fight. And that's when we're <coughs> like, all right, we got to get on purpose. This. Oh yeah, took an earring out and fucking popped it. Wow. Yeah. You could have put a little flex seal on that, an earring. Yeah, but I think my... Uh, or did she... 
Yeah. Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, and I think after that, my mom was like, all right, we got to, you know. Fucking West Side Story these guys, over here. They're clearly animals. <laughs> he had put her stuffed animal on the roof of the house. He would go out climbing on the roof out of one of the windows. Uh-huh. And he, she had a stuffed, a stuffed pig, and he, she put her, her pig got put on the roof. He was a real... He was a real asshole that day. <laughs> I like his style. Well, I remember nice. my mom would come home from work, and he would be, like, on the roof, like, oh. walking around, smoking cigs, and she's like, what are you doing? She couldn't go get him, too. <laughs> she's in scrubs. He just he just did whatever he wanted until, like, he fucking, you know, the cops came or whatever. <laughs> Growing up, my buddy's parents had, you know, the full size, like, they had, like, the king size. My aunt and uncle had a sick one. No, but it was split because the, the mom didn't want the water bed so they had like a single water bed and a single regular mattress in the frame because he liked the water bed and she did it wow that's weird uh-huh. now that would that that's like having sex on the beach uh-huh you're right half at, in half out yeah, right what time's low tide huh <laughs> <laughs> holy jam me up the crab start coming in that's wild uh-huh man that i don't mind um, all right, this one's uh, this one's from Kevin. Is it garbage to pack your winter coat? Hold on, start over. Is it garbage to pack your kids' winter coat with beers when going into a football game because they don't get patted down by security? That's yeah, pretty fucking course. genius. I it don't is. know if it's trashy. I don't, I've never been the sneaking beers in anywhere. I've never been a fan. Really? Nah. Not a sneaker like that. You're Candy nuts. at the movies, yeah, sure. But that's more of a selection thing. Yeah, but there are so many more benefits to sneaking booze in than sneaking candy in. I'm aware of that. Price-wise, Finance- sure. Yeah, but not even that, but it's just waiting in line. Those beer lines get fucking boncos. Sure. They've gotten better with it with the stalls and the stands and shit like that. But if you, you sneak a sixer and you save, I don't know. 80 bucks. True. You save 80 bucks. You don't have to wait True. in line. You drink your own brand. Not, hey, we're out of Coors Light. We have fucking Michelob. Suck my dick. I was always, what if they busted you? I just say, hey, dump those out. What, are you going to throw you in jail? They throw you out of the it's game like, in front of your kid. Kid's the, one, the kid's the one drinking the beers. What do you want from him? Sorry. <laughs> hey, I don't know this little fucker. <laughs> hey, right yeah, I'll see you up on a car. He You're the keys. He, he, he told me to give me a deal on a ticket. That's all I knew, officer. Uh, back before they got back before they got keen to it, uh, we'd go to our uh, the games. You'd wear the hoodie, put beers. They would just search here or your bag, like if you had a bag, and we everybody put like three or four beers in your hoodie, and they wouldn't. That's now they sharp. they kind of will they'll give you like the at least the the grab or whatever. But this is when no one, yeah. And I was like, I was like, maybe we all put them in our hoodie. We snuck, we snuck like thirty beers in between like six or eight of us. That's pretty good. good time. You know, you put them in your butt. It's pretty good too. They don't get them. <laughs> yeah. <it's... laughs> okay. You got to use the pounder can. <laughs> you need the big boys. You got to start off with a pounder and get the other ones in there. <laughs> my uh, my my boy brought it, snuck into a music festival, a uh, a tube of sunscreen full of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never forget him in the middle of a mosh pit squirting vodka, vodka out into of, yeah. his mouth <laughs> 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, that's a big thing on cruises, too. The shampoo bottle. My stepdad did that. They were all going on a cruise, him and another. My you mom. can't bring booze on the cruise? No, because I want you to buy their booze, and their booze is expensive. Really? Yeah, I think everybody's allowed, like, one bottle or something. It's, like, very it's mm. like very regulated. Do they look through your bag? Yeah, they, go, yeah, they like, search your shit. To make Who sure does? The cruise, I guess, I don't know. I've I'm not letting one. some dickhead from fucking Carnival Cruise look through my bag. I mean, the TSA, TSA is one. They, that's a that's a government organization. I don't think it is, though. The TSA isn't a government organization. It's like one of those, like, third. it's real wonky. That's just a fucking guy. guy was I working mean, either at way, C- that's for that safety. That guy was working at CVS two years ago. That's for safety, though. They're part of Homeland Security. There you go. I don't know. That's federal. Some fucking I'm pretty sure they're one of the, I remember Ari went the on a back big thing office that they're of like Princess Cruises. Privatized. It's like one of those like weird semi privatized someone's getting caked up. They look thing. give that a Google. They look through your bag when you get on a cruise? They do, yeah. My my parents have Fuck you. Dealt with that. Fuck that. <laughs> what they <laughs> <laughs> She got caught she got caught with a with an empty leg. <laughs> No, but that's a big thing. Is everybody's. <laughs> it's like the suitcase from Fear and Loathing. <laughs> Roll it. <laughs> you didn't pack one piece of clothes, man. The first thing, if you type how to sneak in booze on a cruise, pops up. It's like one of the main things. 
They sell empty. You can buy Smugs jugs, this guy's hidden four bottle. Yeah, you can buy empty shampoo bottles. Like they, 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 they were Sir, nine bottles of shampoo? Really? <laughs> You're per- bald. I'm Persian. I don't know. <laughs> <even. laughs> um, yeah, that uh, that I would do. I but I remember my dad weeks, my stepdad weeks out was like, we got this, we got the shampoo, he's going to have the this, he's going to have, and like everybody went strapped to the gills with fucking, with booze. Because it's like, <laughs> it's very expensive. It's like $12 a drink or something. Jesus. Imagine living in an airport for four days. Hmm. That's what it's like. You're trying to get fucked up, too. Most <laughs> people on a cruise are going to get fucked up. That's crazy. They look through your bag. Mm-hmm. Damn. I don't know if they still, I mean, that was the big thing. Um. All right, let's see <laughs> here. The sh- uh, one sec. Um, all right. This one is from Shelby. First time, long time. Shelby. Do you or anyone you know request hot beer? I once had a regular in my bartending days requ- request. We kept a 30-pack of Keystone by the cooler motor to raise the temperature above room temp. Ugh. That's crazy. Yeah, that's a crazy person. That's a, yeah, that's nuts. Also, the, the, the Keystone what? Light. Yeah. What's he, what, come on. A couple of pebbles. Yeah. Huh? They, Say uh, one of the mountain battens were, that we're dealing with. That's trash. That's nuts. I don't even... <laughs> li- I need... My beer's got to be screaming. Cold. Warm Keystone. <laughs> screaming. Warm Keystone Light, you're asking for esophageal cancer, too. That shit'll burn. Oh, dude, they go down so hard. Ooh. So hard. They go down hard when they're cold. What? That Keystone. No, I don't mind the Keystone. <laughs> I've been getting back on the light beers. I'm off the IPAs. Is that right? I ate two or three of them last night. Man, they really, if you get off them for a little while, your tolerance dies down. Push you them, I was googly eyed at dinner. <laughs> hey, no. I was making a run on the waiter, dude. <laughs> yeah, this thing is fuck you up anymore. Yeah, that goof you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, really? You yeah, lying, yeah. sister. I'll clown you a little bit. Smack you in the head, pull your ear. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I heard a great term for beer yesterday. Wobbly pops. Mm. Oh, that's pretty good. Well, a couple of two tree wobbly pops. Mm-hmm. A couple weeble wobbles. Straighten you out. Um, all right. This one's from Jeff. When I was growing up, my dad didn't use an air conditioner. When he would get hot, he would lay in the front yard with a fan and have us wipe him down with rubbing alcohol to cool off. That seems crazy. Toxic. That's too much rubbing alcohol. You'd lay in the front yard with a fan. Why not do that in the house? I guess the fumes would get you. Yeah, why make the kids do it too? Why not? You know what I mean? We're gonna put, we're, you know, it's cheap labor. Well, that's not long term. That lasts about thirty seconds. Does feel good though. What the? That's like putting like mineral ice on. It's not yeah. really lowering your temperature. It just it's like makes you feel cool. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know. I mean, yeah, that's garbage. <laughs> of course. Yeah, that's insane. Dead to rights. Sane behavior. Mm-hmm. Tucker T would just wait until the last possible second to put it in, especially going back to the 80s. We didn't have an air conditioner, or we did, and he didn't. I don't know, because I just remember one night us all sleeping. You have central air now? You guys window units. They have sheer central air now. Yeah, to get that put in, because that's an older house, no? I believe so, yeah. yeah. Put, how long have you been in that house? 20, 30 years? <laughs> Since the 80s. 87, I believe. Yeah, they probably... They probably which well, I maybe it was in. We it no, it, in. it wasn't because we had one. We had the biggest air conditioner I've ever seen in my life in the front window of our, of of the house when we moved in for the first of that house. The yeah, for the house. first few years. Window unit on the front. Yeah, it was a bay window. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the size of a pickup truck. It was, or maybe it was in the back. No, it was in the back. It was in the back next to the ne- yeah, and then that was when they before they had it all all done. But it was sticking out heavy bike. It was a huge one. It looked like a regular window unit, but it was fucking like the size of a refrigerator. And that shit would fucking ice you down. Yeah, cold. ain't nothing better than that when it's hot out thrown on a window unit and standing in front of that thing. God cool damn, your pebbles off real quick. But in in my in my my the first house that we lived in, no AC, no central air, and we would ride it out. And I That's think nuts to me. the one summer. When it got real hot, he put it. They put it in the living room, and we all slept downstairs in the living room. And they put blankets over the the, the passageways into like the hallway. 
It was fun, you know, like a Friday night, you're all in there snuggling, you don't know any better. I know, then we've when done you, it down the shore. Then yeah. when you walk through that blanket, you're like, ooh, uh, mm-hmm. start wobbling. Yeah, 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 it's like walking into a fucking kitchen. And then one night, I remember he was trying to put it, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning, my mom was bitching, we were all sleeping in their room, and he was trying to get the window unit in, in, the, in the hole, and he kept catching his finger, like, God damn it, Patty, fucking shit. You don't know how good you got it. Good times. Uh, once you got that thing cooled down, ooh, it was good sleep. Tempers cooled down, too. <laughs> Everybody uh, knocked out cold. We uh, we didn't mind. My dad never mind spending a buck or two, mm-hmm. especially when we didn't have it. So he didn't mind just the air conditioner was never a thing. It was always like turn it on whenever the first hot day was. That would get cooking. Denise at Denise's house, she didn't have a fucking say. The, the inmates were running the asylum. So she would be like, keep it on 78. We were like, okay. 78? Yeah, we would just do whatever the what fuck we- What are we, cooking a turkey? We would just do whatever the fuck we wanted. And then when my stepdad came in, he really tried to rein, like, you know, he's he really tried to rein it all Touch in. Touch that AC. Yeah, he would. They, but he would go to bed at like 8 because he's a construction <laughs> worker. He goes to bed at like 7.15. He wakes up shivering. <laughs> he wakes up. I had that thing at like 67, dude. Just fucking, whoo. <laughs> Like the Coors Light train. He wakes up with a cold. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Sleep. Don't touch that thermostat. All right, pal. <laughs> Sleeping in his underwear. Fucking, I'm sweating it out in the living room watching fucking, you know, get out of here, dude. Not happening. Uh, Patty runs the uh, thermostat. Uh, Gestapo regime. They still do it now. Dude, Crazy. Do you, you go home? My mom. I, it's, it's like. It's oh, better I know it's to all, sleep cold. No, all, it's not. Did you go home? <laughs> they all have they have winter jackets on in the kitchen. Do a bit about it, of yeah. course. It's they, crazy. I remember the one time I walked home, they were both in fucking ski jackets it's on nuts. the couch watching Fox News. I was like, you guys look like you're on a ski lift right now. <laughs> How the slopes, buddy? It's crazy. Yeah, it's kooky. It's crazy. They you, got oh, the, people get to a certain age, and they, they uh, I guess they stop working. They're on fixed incomes. I, I the don't money know what it, it's, in. it. Listen, it cannot be that much more. It can't be. I mean, a couple hundred bucks. I think they just a couple hundred bucks a month. Yeah, it can be, man. It can be a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, if you run it all the time, come on, it can be two hundred bucks a month. I think they're just nuts. (laughs) What are you doing? Oh God! Uh, This is also. I mean, from your perspective, you spent every dollar you've ever made until this point, myself included. We're not. We're not ones to be like. We've never saved a dollar. It's a different generation. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yes, we're spending it before we get it. They're like, hey, we got to fucking, I got to live the next 35 years. You, you got two, three months left. <laughs> Roll the dice. Might as well fucking burn the bridge. <laughs> you got the heat and the AC going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just to let them know you can. Turn the oven on. Let them duke it out. Uh-huh. That's the saddest thing I've realized about myself. I've spent, I've been working since I was 12, and I've spent every dollar I've ever made. Don't most people do that? Though? No, dude, not everybody does that. You we think most in- people have savings saved up? Yes. Huh. Every, uh, not every, a lot of people. Toby have, doesn't. Yes, he does. Not really. For tax purposes. Yeah, I have my taxes saved up. So do you. I don't know what you're getting at. Most people have savings accounts. Like saving savings? Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. You just have the money that's yours. You owe that money to the government. Sure. That, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you don't I'm have ready like, to go. Yeah, you know I'm saying you don't have like savings. No. Nah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We've spent every dollar we've made until this day. You've been working for 30 years and every single dollar you've gotten has gone back into the economy, which I respect. There you Support go. Yeah, no business. shit, man. <laughs> Keeping the fucking wheels turning. Turn the AC up. <laughs> and crack a window while you're at it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, ah. they, they, yeah. We just, we're very irresponsible with money. And we've always have been. Sure. Our family generation, our parents' generation was not. No. You know what I mean? No. But it is what it is. They would scream and yell. You ate everything. I just bought it. Turn that down. Wear that coat again. Don't lose that, Terry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shout out to them. All right. Let's see here. Uh, this is from Ian. Are you garbage if your family, if you, all right, sorry, start over. This is from Ian. Are you garbage if your family taxidermies the dog? Ooh, that's. That doesn't seem, that seems. I it never know. comes out right. It's like plastic surgery in the 80s. Like, yeah. what are you doing? The technology's not it there. It never looks good, man. You know he's not alive. I get it from the perspective of, like, I want to, you know, it's, uh, you know, they're so close to you. They're a family member, the whole nine yards. I get that. But, like, the 
execution of it, and then Hold it on. just doesn't work. I see, listen, I'm not a hunter, okay, but I respect it. Uh, I see taxidermy as a trophy, as a look what I look, look what I did, okay? Sure. And some hunting, obviously. Um, the little elephants and stuff like that. They're nice little things. Mm-hmm. But um, deers are running around all over the goddamn place. Hey, <laughs> take, a, take out a buck or two, a doe. <laughs> Fucking messed up my Chevy Cavalier. <laughs> but, that's, but that's like a trophy. When you know the when you know the animal, that seems a little weird. Yeah, I mean, that at least makes I can I guess I can kind of you give understand. him a hug, you say your goodbyes, and you, and and you, and you take care of it. You can't Put just him in have the freezer. it sitting in a living room. I, I yeah, I don't know doing I mean, like this thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> playing fake catch. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Doing, my doing the Harlem Shake Challenge. My stepdad's dad was big into taxidermy. What? You like too too much? But deers, where, and like you bears and yeah, but birds and quails and yeah. You see, you start doing that. A couple shit. of bears too, which would scare. <laughs> oh yeah, me. yikes! Dude, my buddy Ernie, his dad had a Shout fucking huge Ernie. bear. Yeah, huge, huge hog. Too. They went up and he did have a huge hog. They went up to Alaska or something like that and went on like a hunting trip. That's what those dudes, the, those it. taxidermy dudes. They seek out to go get a certain thing, and a lot of you know, it's a very. It becomes like a trophy, obviously, like a trophy. Trophy. Like, hey, we're going up to Canada. That's this is when the the fucking quails are flocking or whatever. But it's like you can't have like a deer, a lion's head, and then a pit bull head. Just fucking. Yeah. <laughs> well, fucking I would up. argue the people that are taxidermy and the dog, pro- oh, maybe they are taxidermy people. Maybe. Uh, you got you, you, you yeah, listen, listen, listen. I am You're still feeding them every day and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the biggest animal lover. Love 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 love. Hate saying goodbye. Breaks my heart. You gotta let that go. You can't be attacked there. I mean the dog. I've seen somebody do Taking it with them on the vacation cat. and stuff. Yeah, that's all. No, it's all. It just weird. looks like a bad pillow. Get a painting or something. Yeah, something. that's nice. A nice frame, painting. a nice picture, a family picture, something there like that. There you go. Uh-uh. There you go. You can't be having them like you know, walking around, yeah, 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 moving them room to room. Yeah, plus for like Stephen King purposes, that thing comes back. Pet Cemetery. <laughs> Yikes! That movie scared the fucking Ooh. bejesus out of me. No yeah. way, Jose. I slept with the door locked <laughs> for a couple weeks after I saw that, and I saw it begrudgingly. Yeah, if you do get your pet taxidermy, put them in the crawl space for sure. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That's it, gang. We got to wrap it up. Gang, we love you, and we'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.